Check out great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of USDA Choice Boneless Beef Chuck Roast for $3.97 per pound with digital coupon limit two packages. Plus, Hass Avocados are 10 for $10 member price. And get Fuji Apples for just 77 cents per pound with digital coupon. Also this week at Safeway, get selected varieties of Lucerne Milk Gallons for the member price of $3.99 each when you buy two. Visit Safeway.com or head into your local store for more deals. K360 Radio. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who the hell asked for the intro yet, man? You're supposed to start it this way. You see, I'm supposed to go ahead and complain about this. Then we go ahead and play the theme song. Jeez, man. You know, don't ask for a computer to do a man's job. Anyway, let's get back into it because it's almost midnight. Jeez. Anyways, let me tell you all about the J-Man Show. The J-Man Show is... but has been a very stable part of the J360 lineup for quite some time now. And I've noticed that a lot of people have been asking me, hey man, because you're doing other shows, are you actually going to qu- quit doing the J-Man show? And it's like, uh, you do know I'm J-Man, right? <laughs> I don't get it, man. There ain't no way I'm going to stop doing this show anytime soon. <laughs> Anyways, the theme song's still kicking, so I'm gonna say this. Welcome to the J-Man Show here on J360 Radio. Back to it. Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... As easy as pie? Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay, then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... Can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. So how's it going, J360 Legion? <laughs> oh, man. Welcome to the J-Man Show here for episode 159. I'm your host, J-Man, of course. And, um, I'm actually not at the studio right now. Yep, I'm sitting here just chilling in the, uh, God, where am I at nowadays? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm on the other side of the house. (laughs) Watching some classic films. Matter of fact, I'm watching, uh, Clash of the Titans since that's on Netflix right now. It is still damn good! (laughs) And no, I'm not talking about the remake, even though the remake wasn't half bad. Wasn't the best I've seen, but it wasn't that bad. Especially when you watch it with the sequel, Wrath of the Titans. They had something pretty good going there. So, you know, wasn't, wasn't too bad. But right now, this is the all-time classic. The one with Harry Howes and effects. And man, do I love them. I just went ahead and showed the crack in wiping out Argus. Because, you know, the band is Perseus and his mom somewhere. Yeah, so, you know, other than that. It's just been a pretty good evening, uh, you know, watching movies and stuff left and right. That's why this show's a little a little late. I had to go ahead and see the end of Stand and Deliver. You know, throughout all this time, I have never seen that movie fully to the end. You know, Yami Escalante is awesome. He's kind of like a Mr. Clark in a way. We need good teachers like that. I mean, he managed to get all his students to pass the AP calculus test, not once, but twice. And twice because they had to prove to the system in play that those kids actually knew how to do advanced math. Well, the school was in trouble of losing its accreditation, and, you know, inner-city schools always seem to have this kind of problem, especially when it comes to funding, or especially when it comes to graduation rates. And then this time, this man just managed to make sure that every single one of his kids passed, even the one that tried so hard to be gangster. Played by, um, 
Lou Diamond Phillips, if I'm not mistaken. Not bad at all, man. Shoot. I enjoyed it. I wonder, you know, one of these days I'm going to have to pull out Lean on Me and then just watch him back to back again. Probably do an inspirational teacher episode. Because we've all had mentors in our time, and I've had good ones, and I've had bad ones. And needless to say, those bad ones are far and far away ever since I got that college degree. You know, because, um... But you see, the thing about a bad mentor is you kind of want to pay attention to them. Because, you know, honestly, the people that you're around do leave an impact in your life. And you see, I'll always remember those horrible ones because... They're a sign of what's what you could become. I mean, granted, you can become a master of your field all you want to, but if you got that whole problem where you dislike people or you or you show signs of a systemic um well let's not say systemic racism exactly. Let's just say if you show signs of elitism and all and you try to cast other people out and push other people, you know what I mean? Those kind of prejudices, yeah. I had to deal with that crap. I will never forget her name. Ugly B.I. Uh, actually, you know, I'm not even going to waste time cussing at her. But right now, due to, uh, due to just sitting back, chilling, and watching some of these movies, and that massive heat wave that just ran through here in Delaware not too long ago, and I'm not using the studio stuff right now. Yep, using the portable set. I haven't used this in a while, too, and I hope I'm coming through pretty nice and clear. So, you know, it's just one of those kind of things. You just sit there, you test it out. I remember the last time I went really, really portable. I was in the car just driving around Delaware, having a good time, talking mess, letting y'all know about comics and stuff. And which, by the way, I need to get me another stack of comics sometime. Of course, I'm not going to get a stack. I'll probably get, like, digital stuff. And, you know, a little bit of opening arguments here for the ramble and every, every single thing. I managed to see a couple of things for Schlockomania. Which, by the way, I need to go ahead and bring that back. Since things are kind of dying down here and there, and there's not a lot of stupid stuff going on, and I don't want to take all of the problems in real life and throw them at you entirely right now, we all could use a little bit of an escape. I decided to watch some of the uh, Silent Silent Night, Deadly Night films. The first two, at least. Because, the, well, the second one was free on Amazon Prime. And the first one, I was like, well, you know, I haven't seen it in a while since, like, what, last Christmas. And I kind of looked at it in a hackneyed way. So I was like, it deserves a rewatch. So I watched the first one again. You know, to be honest with you, Billy couldn't help himself, man. You know? The, the kid really couldn't help himself. I mean, after dealing with his crazy grandfather, and then seeing his parents getting killed... By a uh, homeless Santa Claus, or well, it wasn't even homeless. He was just a, it was a criminal in a Santa Claus suit, who never was apprehended. By the way, left an emotional toll on the boy's psyche, and then he had to land in a horrible place that that nobody really asks for. You know, he landed in an orphanage ran by nuns. Now, see, I never had this situation, but I know some people out there have had them. And sometimes it can either be good or bad, depending on the circumstances and the situation you're faced with. And I mean, these nuns, well, the one nun really cared about him. You see what I'm saying? She was like, he needs help. He needs to be associated with other kids his age and help him really get through what he needs to get through. I think her name was Sister Margaret. Yeah, yeah, she was actually helpful to the boy. But you see, the main villain of this whole thing... The real person that created him and made him into a monster, Mother Superior. Mother Superior got on my damn nerves, man. I was like, are you insane? You're going to try to take this boy's trauma and throw it at him like this and go and punish him for basically just anything you feel as though you're going to punish him for? That he was naughty? And sure, like, um, there were teenagers at this orphanage, of course, you know. And they, they two of them were in there doing the do. He managed to catch it, got to see some fornication going on at an early age, exposed to it. However, I want to say however, instead of being talked about it, homeboy got punished for it, especially for leaving his room. That really annoyed me. I mean, some of y'all probably seen my reactions to things 
on the Instagram, and I do do that from time to time, you know, where I riff on films a little bit. But man, I was like, that that was it. He, you left your room, William, and of course, Sister Margaret tried to say like, you know, she was responsible for him leaving his room, but she ain't want to hear that. It seems as though like she just tried to find any opportunity to beat Billy, and in doing so, made him a very repressed individual. Because later on, we see him growing up, and we see him working at a toy store. We see him, you know, looking like he's actually getting it together. But little did we realize that Billy's mind was still in the process of being emotionally stunted. And as it was emotionally stunted, you know it don't take long for something to really make somebody snap. And boy, how he did it, because... Around Christmas time, and whenever he sees the sight of Santa, that makes him crazy. You know what I'm saying? And granted, he had a little crush on the attractive uh, co-worker that, um, that's there at his establishment, Pamela. Pamela seemed to be a nice woman. Then, you know, they had a, had a connection there. Of course, he also gets in a fight with uh, his team lead, or, you know, the underboss there, I would like to say, Andy. Who works on and they all work under Mr. Sim, so you know how that goes. I mean, especially if any of y'all worked in retail, there's always that one person that's supposed to oversee a department. And if you're working in stocking, chances are you're working with or under that person. Yeah. The dingus of the store, if you will. I'm trying to be a little bit nice about it, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm not the dick of the store. Let's just say that. <laughs> and see while you have that issue going on. He tried to complain about him about his work ethic after a while, especially when it came to December time. And, you know, he got in this and, you know, Billy got in his face. And said, I don't care about my damn my damn job. He's like, oh, really? Yet again. And then, like, you know, it was all arguing back and forth. But after a while, you could tell Billy was about to snap bit by bit by bit because he's seeing the other side of retail where if you're not kissing up, chances are they're going to try to abuse you about it. And you see, you don't see it too much happening from the guy who runs the store. You're seeing it from all the people around Billy. But the crap really hits the fan when it turns out that the mall, well, not the mall, but the, the do- department store Santa could not make it to the event. So they had to find somebody else to be Santa. And, of course, it went to Billy. Oh, Billy. And you see, the thing is, Sister Margaret, who got him the job, yeah, because nobody wanted to take Billy out of the orphanage. Went ahead and found him this job. And you could tell that he didn't want to be naughty anymore because he had a nightmare where him and Pamela got together and fornicated. But then Santa came in or stabbed him or some, some crazy dream of his. It's similar to what happened in um, Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> so, somehow the 80s could actually film circumstances where the main character dreams and they're always in a screwed up state of affairs I've been always trying to learn how to film that way so I don't know maybe one one day I'll learn how to do it but uh oh yeah Twitter's booming right now keep in mind I'm using the portable set I need to turn off all these notifications one of these days but back to the movie you see like and then as soon as um, things start to really heat up here because Billy couldn't stand being Santa that's the first start of his uh, decline right now. The next part is, after he goes through it, you know, he has to do the job of having the kids sit on his lap, tell them what they want for Christmas. And you know how there's always that one kid that's always so scared, they start crying and all that stuff. You should see how Billy actually handled that. He handled that in the stern stepfather way. He's like, what are you doing? Don't you know if you're naughty, I'll never give you anything? Don't you know if you're naughty, I'll never... And, like, the way he was gripping on the little girl's um, shoulders and stuff, I was like, yo, man, relax. Relax, you'll get through this. Little did I realize he did get through it in another way, but I'll, I'll explain that in a few minutes. Then after a while, you know, Mr. Sims, the owner of the store, he was like, eh, it's time to get S-Face now. No more customers. Yeah, let's go ahead and have a good time. And everybody's getting ready to enjoy their party. But old Andy, being the snake that he is, and Pamela, being as beautiful as she was, he decided to say, hey, you know what? I got a mistletoe. Yeah, let's go in the back. Come on. Let's go ahead and have a little play play. 
And indeed they did. But you see, uh, Billy being there and still in his, uh, <laughs> his costume was slowly but surely going insane. Because as soon as he saw the girl go away with, with Andy, that was a little bit of enough. And then, of course, you know, Sims and his, uh, I don't know who that lady was. Maybe she was just another person that worked there, but still, it, it didn't matter because they were on the chop block anyway. They were still having a good time getting all drunk and everything. So Billy went ahead and heard some stuff going on in the back storeroom. So as he walks to the storeroom, he, he, he not only hears, he sees Andy forcibly having Pamela down on the table. Now, honestly, when I first talked about this film, I only saw bits and pieces. So I assumed that Pamela willingly went along with it. But you see, apparently not, because Andy was here trying to get some one way or another. It was the 80s, folks. I mean, you know, no does mean no. But in those kind of ways, you always had, like, the jerk just saying, you know what, you're going to give me them tits. And he did. He exposed uh, Pamela's tits and tried to get all up in that. Much in the same way that the um, old Santa that killed Billy's mom did, because he was going to attempt to get some titties right away. And you see, uh, tip to rate titties is not good as, like, you know, regular the girl rips off her shirt willingly titties. Keep that in mind. Oh, my God, what kind of show am I running here? Uh, <laughs> so, getting back into it, though, as soon as Billy saw that, Billy had no choice but to take matters in his own hands. He picked old boy up, using his super psycho strength, Wrapped him up in the Christmas lights, choking the hell out of him. Especially after he called, and he called him naughty. <laughs> and then old Andy just couldn't stand up to him as much as he liked to. He choked him to death. Pamela, on the other hand, you know, while grateful that Andy's not on her anymore, really couldn't handle the idea of how far Billy went ahead to uh, take care of her attacker. So, you know, she called him out as crazy and said, stay away from her. And then old Billy, with his knife, decided to go ahead and, um, you know, do Pamela in. To which he did. And I sat there and I, and I thought about it. I was like, you know, on one hand, but yet on the other hand, well, you see, nothing really condones murder for people. I mean, at the end of the day, he could have just knocked old Andy out. But, you know. This is the movie, after all. So as he went ahead and wiped out both of them, you know he had to go ahead and take care of the rest of them, because he was far gone at this point. And then eventually he managed to get his axe, and he um, took care of the... The last person he took care of was um, the woman. But he already knocked... He already took care of Sims. Sims was dead on arrival anyway. Drunk bastard. So as he went out, as he went out into the world... He decided to go ahead and massacre whoever was in his way and whatever he seemed as naughty. Because he's not Billy at this point. He's Psycho Santa Billy. And see, eventually Psycho Santa Billy is going to go after the one that really put him on the path of darkness, Mother Superior. Of course, Mother, um, Mother, or, bah, not Mother, Sister Margaret, she might as well have been the mother. Sister Margaret was going ahead and trying to stop him by getting the police enlisted. They managed to get one police officer to come around. He um, managed to go to the orphanage because they knew that's where he was going next and managed to pump a few rounds into a Santa, but it wasn't the right Santa. And even though he pumped a few rounds into a Santa, he did not check to see if the Santa was armed, and it was right there in front of multiple children, including one of them that was Billy's younger brother, Ricky. So as all that was going down... And, and the police officer was like, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know, you, you know how that goes, a lot of you do. However, he went back out in the field to see if Billy was around, Billy managed to trick him into looking into one of the areas he lived in, and then Billy went ahead and got the, <laughs> the police officer right in the chest with his axe, took care of him. And then he was on his way into the orphanage where the rest of the kids were celebrating Christmas. Each one of them had their gifts and talking about being appreciative of what was going on. He's there with his axe. He's ready to go ahead and take down Mother Superior. And Mother Superior called him out on his behavior for God knows what reason. Because needless to say, I'm sitting there the whole time like, get her. Kill the hag. Take the hag out. Do what you got to do, William. But then, pow, pow, pow. 
Uh, the chief of police, along with uh, Sister Margaret, managed to take out Billy. Billy hits the ground. And you see Sister Margaret just looked, and that's it. Well, you know, looked at him. She looked at him. It was a tender moment. And Billy's last words was, I saved you all. Santa Claus is no more. And dies. But this was not to go unnoticed because his little brother Ricky looking at him. Then looks over at Mother Superior and says, naughty. Movie ends. But only to begin again in part two, which deals with Ricky's exploits. Now you see, the thing about this movie is I don't really need to delve into it because quite a lot of it was recapping the first one. And retcon in the first one a little bit because they changed some of the names around. And also, Billy became insane because of all he witnessed, too. And, well, not Billy. Who? Oh, no, Billy's dead. Ricky. Ricky. Ricky became insane because of all he witnessed, too. And you see, the thing is, Ricky managed to get out of the orphanage. He got adopted. But you see, it just wasn't enough. And he was triggered by images of Santa, too. I mean, plus, once you find out that your older brother was um, an insane killer and dressed up as a Christmas idol, something is wrong and bound to happen. So we see some of his exploits, but eventually he starts snapping due to, like, due to his circumstances where the girl he was dating, her ex, her jerk of an ex-boyfriend came up, and I don't know what it is about the 80s movies, but you notice... The, the ex is always a snarky, <laughs> stupid individual and always needs to be taught a lesson. You see, old boy, he took out jumper cables and took care of the ex-boyfriend. So, And then he managed to snap his girlfriend's neck, among other things. And then, of course, you know, later on we find him in the, in the psycho ward telling this story. But eventually he kills the psychologist and then... You know, he leaves and starts to go on his rampage again. This time to take out Mother Superior. To which he does. It's not really satisfying, though, because it's not the same person who played as the original Mother Superior. And you're kind of hoping that Billy would have ended her anyway. But, man, you know, one thing led to another. It it wasn't as good as the first one, but it it held its own. You know, because at least she got taken out. But still, at the same time, it's like... Yeah, it would have been better if the original guy did it. <laughs> but of course, you know, you don't really need me to tell you what, what happened in the end, because it was about the same. You know, he gets taken out by the police. Or so we thought. Because there's a third one, actually, and it turns out that when they shot Ricky, Ricky didn't die. Ricky went to sleep. Ricky was in a coma. So, that is possible in some cases, but... <laughs> And those particular movies, very, very interesting piece. And as far as I'm concerned, if you ever want to like take the edge off of all the holiday commercialism, you should just watch those movies. And I should have just waited until the holidays to tell you about them, but I don't know, I did delve into them last holiday um, episode I did. And, you know, speaking of holidays, I just want to get this off my chest. You know, when the 4th of July comes around, isn't it amazing how other people will tell you how to celebrate it? Isn't it amazing, like, how everything around us now is so damn divided, when at the same time we're all supposed to be united, have this unified goal, and actually, um, we're all supposed to come together? But right now, you know, we got so much division happening. And it seems like the more and more we delve into the history and take bits and pieces from it as much as we can, we keep finding more and more fortifications to see, you know what I'm saying? Like we're all going to war with each other. Even on the micro to the macro level of things. And it's, and it's you know, it's bound to happen. I mean, you're bound to piss off a lot of people, especially with what you read up on. But then you think about this from time to time. Now that I have this knowledge, could I just learn from it or do I have to be a jerk about everything? You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying it like this. Juneteenth is a very important day for African Americans. Why not the 4th of July? Why not any of these major holidays in the U.S.? 
And I'm not talking about the ones we make up, like National Ice Cream Day, National Comic Book Day. Hell, National Comic Book Day should be every other Wednesday, if you think about it. But the truth is, is this. Just because somebody celebrates 4th of July and not Juneteenth, or vice versa, doesn't mean you need to be in a huff about it. I'll celebrate both of them. You know why? One, because I'm black and I'm proud. (laughs) You damn right. And another thing is because I'm an American and I own a business and I pay taxes. Sheesh, among other things. So you damn right I celebrate both of them. And I cook out on both of them too. So hey, once I'm over there in the West, you know, you come on by and enjoy yourself. Yeah, you damn right. Celebrate Juneteenth and the 4th of July. And I don't have no problem doing both. And neither should anybody else. But I like how people will go on this uh, narrative and say, you know, 4th of July had nothing to do with the black people. And it's like, hey, you know, 4th of July wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for black people. On both sides. Once again, like I say, a lot of people say, um, you know, that's one for them. No, it's one for everybody, whoever wants to celebrate. And I'm going to tell you this, right? Because guess what? Quite a lot of my ancestors were in there dying and fighting in wars that they did not build either. And not by choice. Quite a lot of yours did it too. So let us honor them by, you know, partaking and, you know, showing respect for being involved in things they didn't ask to be involved in. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure quite of them are like, you know what? I'm going to celebrate the 4th anyway. I'm going to celebrate Juneteenth. I'm going to celebrate all these important dates. Because I can. And allow yourself to do it. Because I'm sure there's some people out there that are pro this, pro that. And they're saying everything they want to say. But the worst part about it all is... People don't go, go down alone. Misery loves company. Other people like to lump other people in and say, Oh, well, I feel comfortable in numbers. Yeah, there's strength in numbers, all right. But you see me being the army of one that I am. (laughs) Yeah, I usually have to be like, okay, let me answer all these questions for a bit. Let me just have both of them. And I like how people try to say, oh, well, you you know, well, well, white people stole a lot from us. Well, then steal that holiday back. What is wrong with you? (laughs) Yes, controversial statements, man. I'm all about them. And truth be told, I'm not going to apologize for it. No, because I'm unapologetically me. And if you pay attention to what I say, you'll understand I'm right. And then here's the funny part about that kind of stuff. If you don't get the humor and you don't get the truth of what I'm saying, well, hey, welcome to the J-Man Show. (laughs) Because there's a lot of truth in what I say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just astounding to me. I'll be sitting there, bar- shoot. Oh, man, I might as well barbecue during Halloween. It's the day after my birthday. Why not? Oh, which, by the way, when my birthday rolls around, and just for all of you for future notice and stuff, it's called All Hail J-Man Day. And truth be told, I'm probably doing some wild stuff on J360 TV. Matter of fact, I'll probably live stream a lot of my moments on there. So for you all to look into if that ever happens. <laughs> and it will because, hey, J360 TV is booming along, man. I managed to write a few things for it. So we're going to see what's going to happen as I get where I need to be. Because i got to go ahead and look into some gear. And there's something I still have to buy gear. But um, that's why Hanging with J-Man's been on hold for a little bit. Because I was looking into getting some new stuff. Some of the things are being written and some of the old ones are actually being made into um, something for uh, YouTube. So you're going to be looking into that, hopefully. And why wouldn't you? And also, let's see. There's a J360 Jams happening this week. And man, the playlist is slamming. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of my friends on the Synthwave circuit, they managed to release some new albums. So as they did, I'm going to take two from each album and I'm going to put it on the playlist this week. And that'll give you all a chance to partake of some of their work that they've listened to. And if you like it, you know, Do what you got to do, support them, and buy the album on Bandcamp if you like. Something to look into, y'all, and plenty of things to happen. So it's going to be a pretty fun fun weekend. And also, you know, 
yes, I know 2020 can be a real pit. And it has shown a lot about the dark sides of humanity. A lot of things to be frightful and aware of. But here's the thing. Fight through the fear a little bit. You know? Got to make some changes here and there. Got to go ahead and give things a chance to succeed. And we might have to change up the way we do things a little bit. Wear a mask. But don't stop living. Don't stop having fun. Find a new way to go about things. I mean, I like to think that some of y'all develop self-reliance during your quarantine. And then I like to think a lot of y'all have developed new skill sets that you can actually go on the market for. Because there's a market for everything. It just takes time to build it. And, shoot, don't I know that. Because <laughs> a few of these startups I have, you know, I have to go ahead and put on the back burner. And then, you know, I also have some big plans for uh, J360 Productions, of course. So, nothing else to look away from. Just have to get started on it. And in case some of y'all are wondering what the next game for the J360 Power Play is, it's Bioshock 2. I managed to figure out what the third game's going to be. And, you know, we've got a lot to look forward into. However, the Power Play comes back next next week. Yeah, it does. It does. So, you know, just sitting here letting you know what's happening. And then, of course, um, I was thinking about doing some comic reviews again. Mm, I haven't done them in a while, but, you know, it's... Time to get back in the swing of things. You know, give you guys some more entertainment and something to look forward to. Now, does that mean the J-Man show is going to turn uh, turn away from real world events? No. <laughs> it's just another way of me to get by and help you all out. Because, you know, things have gotten kind of heavy on this show lately. I mean, I was just sitting back listening through the whole 150 lineup. And man, I mean, if you really think about it, I go deep sometimes, but I never thought I'd go that deep. Hmm. Amazing. I wonder what the whole 160 lineup's going to be. But anyway, this episode is actually part of a double special this week. And since half of this uh, started last night, it still counts as a Wednesday episode. Going into today, which you get another episode tonight. So yeah, you got like two (laughs) back-to-backs. Lucky you. And the thing that people try to say, I don't do anything for the J360 Legion. Heh! <laughs> I do enough. But other than that, though, um, I hope you all take it easy and live your lives well. Because we'll reunite at the same spot, hopefully a little bit more earlier. <clears throat> because you're all important to me. And at the end of the day, I'm always doing enough for you guys as leader of J360 and all. So, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about something even more entertaining later tonight and you all just go ahead and be patient about it because um god knows what i'm gonna get into with this one (laughs) but until then this is the j-man signing off you all take it easy peace Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.